Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So a few days ago, there was a discussion on one of the Facebook typewriter groups about if you wanted to start a YouTube channel about typewriters, how do you do those shots, those close-up video shots looking right over the typewriter? How do you do that? without getting the camera and tripod and all that in the way of you being able to do your work. And I thought that was an interesting uh, question. It's sort of the Venn diagram overlook between photography, videography, and typewriters. And I thought I would show you one particular solution, which I use. It's not the only solution. But I thought it might be fun to cover this topic. Stay tuned. Well, I'm not the only videographer out here in the world of YouTube that does typewriter videos. Certainly there's a lot of others. And one of the people that's very notable, probably the most notable person in terms of typewriter repair videos is Dwayne Jensen of Phoenix Typewriter. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Dwayne uses a modified clamp light, one of those lights that clamps to a table, it's articulated light, and instead of a light on the end of it, he has a bracket so he can mount his cell phone. And if you've ever seen his videos, he'll often reposition his camera as he's working on things, and that is afforded the opportunity to do that because of the adjustable tension on that articulating arm. And so that's one solution. But myself, I'm using cameras that are a little bit heavier uh, than a cell phone and need a little bit more sturdy mount than what you could do with a light fixture. So this is an example of the kind of camera I'm using. These are Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. Uh, this is the G7, so this is like, what? two or three generations old. I like to use manual focus lenses uh, when I'm doing these close-up shots because it gives me a lot of control over the focus and the depth of focus. I should preface this by saying that there are turnkey solutions to this problem. If you go online to b &H Photo, for instance, there's going to be a lot of different solutions for a boom arm to support a camera off axis from a tripod. And you can spend however much money you'd like to, but I'm always one of these guys that likes to kind of do it myself, make a, an alternative from materials I might easily find at the hardware store. And one of these materials that I like to work with is the square poplar sticks that you get in the hardware store and they come in a variety of lengths there's uh, 36 inches and 48 inches so this is going to serve as a boom arm i'm going to support it on a tripod off centered so the tripod is here and you have a long arm with a camera on it and a counterweight back here to counterweight the uh, the weight of that yeah, so this uh, clamp is what holds that square stick in place. So we have a piece of inch and a half by three quarter wood, two pieces here, and we have a couple pieces of the same kind of stick that we're using for the boom. And I wrapped some tape, some masking tape around the boom so that there was a little bit larger space in here, and I glued and clamped it around the boom and that's uh, what let it dry and that's what makes this thing here but before i did it i had to mount a tripod nut and i had to tap and thread a quarter 20 hole in this area and the quarter 20 hole is so that you can put a thumb screw in here and adjust the boom on this clamp and then tighten it down so it doesn't move this tripod bushing is for my tripod that I'm using. I'm using a heavy-duty Bogan tripod, and that goes right on here. And that is the device that enables me to hold the boom arm in place on the tripod. So I'm using a heavy-duty three-axis tripod where each axis is individually adjustable. And I like that because it gives me control. Like, for instance, I have the pan axis uh, loosened up, I can freely pan the unit back and forth, whereas the other two axes are locked at this point. So here I'm going to put the square stick through the hole in the bracket. And I usually give it a position where it's maybe one-third of the length of the stick is over here, and two-thirds is where the camera is going to be. And then I just tighten the thumb screw down, and you also should probably tighten the clamp down yeah, nice and securely. Okay, so now we have a boom arm that pivots back and forth. So I like to use the tilt axis for making the boom go up and down. So I have to redo my hexagonal plate at that angle so that now I can tilt the boom arm up and down. 
Okay, we need a counterweight next. So for the weight of camera that I'm using, a five pound barbell would be perfect, but I only have a 10 pound barbell, but it is a Jack LaLanne barbell, and that means a lot. So I put this barbell maybe a couple inches from the pivot point, like that, and then I have several inexpensive spring-loaded hardware store clamps that I just use. Now, I could have made another set of wooden sliding brackets, but using these clamps is just a little bit more expedient. And let's see how we're going to mount the camera to the other end. Okay, I'm going to tighten down this clamp for this axis, so even though the arm is off balance because there's nothing on this end of it, it'll still hold it. Focus on the tip of it here. Okay, so what I'm using to support my cameras is I'm using a quarter twenty eye bolt with a couple jam nuts that kind of presets the length of this. So there's a hole drilled down through here that's a little bit bigger than the quarter twenty, so this bolt is loose. And then the second thing I'm using is all my cameras, I use these Joby Gorillapod ball heads. This is a common mount that I use for all my cameras, and it has the associated mounting plate that goes on the bottom of your camera. Now, you might notice, if I showed it to you, you would notice that the original threads in the base of this ball head mount are 3 8 and then they use a uh, quarter 20 adapter. And you notice that little shoulder, the lip of the adapter, keeps it from threading all the way down. So actually the problem on these is that you end up supporting the ball head on a very narrow little flange. And so what I do to get around that is I use a fender washer that now I can support the whole ball head very easily. So we'll put the bolt, the fender washer, and the ball head here. And we can tighten that down nicely. And now we have an adjustable arm. We can tilt the tripod boom arm up and down. We can rotate it left and right, and we have all this freedom of movement of the ball head itself. So you'll notice there's a little cutout in the ball head. That's where you would point it down, point the camera down at your work surface if you're in a vertical shot. So let me hook a camera up to this and show you how it works in practice. So for this exercise, I'm going to use my main studio camera, which is the Panasonic GH3. It already has one of those mounting plates on the bottom. And I clip it in there. And this is where you want to adjust the position of the clamps for the counterweight. So you can move it a little bit further out maybe and get it so that if you loosen that axis, it's going to be nicely balanced. Let's move a little bit further out. And this is a, one of the reasons why you want to use a three-axis tripod because the, the ability to lock down this axis by hand uh, is going to give you a lot more uh, lockdown strength than if you were using an adjustable ball head like this Sunpack ball head. The problem with these universally adjustable ball heads is that what locks the ball in place is a spring and that spring has a fixed amount of tension and what you're doing by adjusting it, you're just releasing the spring with a hand grip but you can't lock this down tighter than the spring permits whereas with a three axis tripod I can lock down individual axes as tight as I want them like that or like this okay okay so let's get this moved over my typewriter and see how this works okay so what I do is I set the tripod off to the side of my work area here, typewriter somewhere in the middle of the table, middle where I'm sitting, and then I'm going to loosen the clamp on the tilt axis and I'm going to try to figure out the best place to position this so I'm right over the typewriter. And I have a lot of freedom of motion here in terms of I can reposition the uh, tripod itself, I can pivot the axis up and down, I can pivot this way, right? However I need to do to center it over the typewriter, and of course my ball head gives me the ability to get it nice and squared up on the typewriter. So here I am, and I have this camera set up right over the typewriter. Now I have room to tinker with the typewriter. The camera is not in my way. But there's two other considerations you want to think about. First of all, composing and focusing. And this is why it helps to have a camera with a tilty screen. And I can orient that so I can see that screen. 
if you're using a manual focus lens, of course you can manually focus, but this is an autofocus lens. So another accessory that's really handy is the little remote shutter device that plugs into a cable on the side of the camera. And you can half press this and acquire focus. And uh, then you can fully press it to start or stop the clip without touching the camera, which causes the camera to shake, right? So a nice little setup. Oh, and the other thing is, mic is your audio. You want your microphone plugged in in the camera. And then a good place to put your microphone, I found, when you're working, is the eye bolt right here. If you just clip the microphone to the eye bolt so it's pointing back at you. Um, I'm only within, you know, six or eight inches of my, my face here. I'm, I'm speaking right into the microphone, so it's not like down on my chest where the sound is going to be muted because the, the high frequencies are um, not being picked up because I'm so off axis. So here's a nice little setup, right? I can move my typewriter around and I can, you know, move my mount. I can adjust the angle of it. If I want to get a wider shot of the whole typewriter, then I can uh, raise it up, readjust my ball head like that, uh, center the typewriter over it, and I have all this adaptability, adjustability. If I want to get really close to the typewriter, whatever the minimal focal distance of my lens is, I can do that as well, like that. Get right down in there and show all the fun details of the typewriter. Okay, so now that you're done with your overhead rostrum shots, you can then remove your camera from the arm. And then you can just disconnect the arm from the tripod. I found that these hardware clamps will hold the 10 pound weight just fine. And I store that over in the corner of my office, my studio. I usually take the ball head off and use it on a, some other application. As I said earlier, you could spend a lot of money on these at B&H Photo and other uh, retailers of video accessories. But if you like to tinker a little bit, make yourself one of these little wooden ones uh, just out of a stick and a couple other items if you have the tools and the accessories. So this is my cobble together way of doing it. Um, you might want to get a real fancy boom arm set up for your camera, but you know, they cost some money and it uh, depends if you're a tinkerer or not. Well, that's just an idea for how to mount a video camera over your typewriter if you're interested in doing typewriter videos. And I think we should have more typewriter video uh, channels. I want to give a plug, a shout out to Sarah over at Just My Typewriter channel. She's great. She does a lot of good videos. Be sure to watch her. Also, be sure to watch Dwayne Jensen at Phoenix Typewriter. And also, Typewriter Justice is another uh, YouTube channel about typewriters. He hasn't put out as many videos recently, but those are some of the other typewriter-oriented cha channels that do talk about maintenance a little bit, if that's what interests you. And as always, I wish you guys well. Stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.